Hi, welcome to the Pod Brothers Virtual Choir video editing tutorial. We'll be teaching you the basic editing skills you'll need to create a virtual choir. For this example, you'll see one of our virtual caroling kits in action, but the basic steps can be pretty much the same for any kind of virtual performance project. We'll be making a virtual quartet that looks like this. This connect should be really straightforward, even for someone who's never done it before. For this tutorial, we're using a program called Wii Video to do the editing. Wii Video is pretty amazing. It's cloud-based video software, so there's no installation. Think Google Docs, but for video editing. This means you could start your project on one computer and finish it on another, or even collaborate remotely with someone else. Also, it's pretty cheap and subscription-based, so you can easily get it for just a month or two while you're working on something. Go to wevideo.com to make an account, and you'll find plans for individuals, organizations, and schools. All right, we're going to actually get started putting this thing together, assuming you've already collected all the individual videos from your singers and have them in one place on your computer. And you'll also need the accompaniment track you plan to use as well. Okay, once that's taken care of, we'll start by clicking Projects at the top and click this plus icon. Name it whatever you'd like. I'll call mine the Pod Squad Virtual Choir. And you can write a description or leave it blank. Then click Create Video to get started. We're going to stick with Blank Edit. Now we'll go ahead and start editing. There are three main areas you need to know about to make your video. First is the timeline. This is where you will assemble your video. Think of this as the main work area. Second is the media library. This is where you will add any of the video and audio clips to be used in your project. Third is a preview window. This is where you get to watch your project as it's coming together. These three dots between the media area and the project window can be used to resize your window if you want to adjust the way things look as you're working. And just so you know, WeVideo is saving your video continuously. By default, it's called My Video. Let's change that by clicking on My Video and renaming it. We'll continue by importing any media we're going to be using in this project. Drag and drop your media files here, or click Add and browse to find them. You'll need to add all singer videos and your performance accompaniment track. Here are the clips of the four singers for this video. If you'd like to add more media later, you can always drag and drop it into the library or click Import. I'm going to import the accompaniment track from my Downloads folder. Next, in the timeline, you'll need to create new video tracks to make sure there is one for each of the singers you plan to include in this project. By default, they start you off with two video tracks, so I'm going to create two more by clicking the plus sign above the track names, and then clicking Add Track. Make sure you're making video tracks and not audio tracks. You can even rename each track if you'd like to stay organized by clicking on the name. All right, now it's time for the fun part, adding the media to our timeline to start editing. First, I'm going to put the accompaniment track on the audio track at the bottom by simply dragging and dropping it in. Now, before we add the video clips, check to see if there's a blue progress bar at the bottom of the thumbnail. If there is, wait for that to finish and disappear before you add it to the timeline. This could take a few minutes. All right, now that these are done processing, I'm going to add Candace to her video track, again by clicking and dragging. The first step with each clip you add will be to get it synced up with the accompaniment using the clap on each track. So click the sound icon to display the audio waveform on the clip you're trying to sync. Now we can see Candace's waveform, and I'm looking for the spike at the beginning where she clapped on beat four. Use a zoom slider in the bottom right to take a closer look. You can see the spike where she clapped here. All right, click and drag the left edge of your clip to trim off the excess beginning, then click the clip's thumbnail and drag it left and right to get the clap lined up with the accompaniment track's clap. 
I'm looking at the two audio waveforms to line up the spikes vertically. Once the clap is lined up, the track should be pretty well synced, but it's likely they will still need a small adjustment. One, two, three, four. All right, have a listen and make very small adjustments based on if the singer is a little late or a little early compared to the accompaniment. Use spacebar to start and stop the playback from wherever the blue playback line is positioned. You can move the blue playback line by dragging the rectangle at the top or clicking the time code just above the ruler. Deck the hall with boughs of holly, fa la 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 She sounds a little early, so I'm going to move her just a little bit to the right. As you get your clips synchronized, make sure you adjust the singer track and not the accompaniment track, since you'll be repeating this process with each singer you add. If you're zoomed out, the adjustments will be larger, so if you need to make smaller adjustments, zoom in close before you drag the clip. La la, tis the season to be jolly, fa la la Nice. Now let's do a rough audio mix before we move on. Use the sliders below each track name to adjust the volume. Of course you'll want to fine tune things when all the singers are in, but it's good to get a rough mix established as you go. I come to you and to we'll just turn her down a little bit. So now that Candace is in sync with the accompaniment, we need to resize and reposition her to make room for more singers. It's a good idea to plan your layout before you start this process. Double click the thumbnail of the clip you want to edit in the timeline. The scale slider lets you easily begin resizing. You can also use the handles that appear in the corners if you prefer. To reposition the clip, simply click and drag. I'm making this video with four singers, so each clip will go in one quadrant of the screen. You'll need to plan a layout that accommodates the total number of singers you want on screen. If you'd like to see a grid to make sure things are nice and tidy, click Show Grid at the top right. Once you're done, click Save Changes at the bottom and you'll be back at the timeline. Alright, that's it for our first singer. It may seem like a lot, but once you've done it a couple times, it's actually pretty quick and easy and can be broken down into three basic steps. Drag a singer clip to your timeline, synchronize the new clip with your track, resize and reposition to fit your layout. So let's do it again with another singer and a little less explanation this time. I'll add Melissa next. Notice that Candace seems to be gone from the preview. We Video uses the order of the video tracks to determine the visual priority. Since Melissa's track is above Candace's, her video is in front. This isn't going to be an issue once we resize and reposition Melissa. But first, let's get her in sync. Click the sound icon, zoom in, find the clap, trim off the excess, and move the clip to synchronize. It's easiest to use Candace's waveform to line up Melissa's clap since the accompaniment track may be out of view. Have a listen and make any further adjustments needed. Deck the hall with boughs of holly, fa la 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 la, tis the season to be. I think she's just a tiny bit late, so I'm going to nudge her a little bit earlier. I'll zoom in to make just a small change. Much better. All right, I'm just going to turn Melissa up a little bit and Candace down to balance. La 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 la, troll the ancient. Now I'll double click the clip to resize and reposition. And once you're done, save the changes. All right, I'll fast forward as I repeat this process to add Nick and Jared. Tis the season to be jolly, fa la 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 
Deck the hall with boughs of Deck the hall with boughs of holly for the la 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 Okay, once all the singers have been added and synced up, make any last tweaks to the audio mix using those volume sliders for each track on the left. Here we come, a wandering so fair to be seen, love and joy come to you. Alright, sounds good, and now it's time to put on the finishing touches. First, we need to get rid of the count in so our final video will start at the beginning of the song. We're going to do this by cutting off the beginning of each track until just after the clap. I'll zoom in to find where the clap is and put the playhead just to the right of it. Now I'll scroll all the way up and click to select the top clip on my timeline. Then I'll scroll all the way back down until I can see my accompaniment track at the bottom. Now if I hold down the shift key on my keyboard while I click the accompaniment track, it will select this bottom track as well and everything in between. Now that everything is selected, click the little scissor icon on the playhead, which splices all the selected clips at once. So everything to the left of the splice is extra that I want to get rid of. We need to select those extra clips to delete them. You can do this one by one, which is a little tedious, or you can click and drag a selection box to grab a few at a time. After you've got one or more selected, just press delete on your keyboard. If at any point you accidentally delete something by mistake, you can click this undo arrow here, or the usual command Z on a Mac or control Z on a PC. Next, we need to move everything that we kept over to the beginning of the timeline so there isn't a gap here between the start of the project and all our clips. So again, I'll select all of these clips at once and then drag them over. Once they're selected, just click and drag to the left. And we've got to do the same thing at the end. Since all these clips are different lengths after the music stops, we'll make it so everything ends together right after the final button. So first, put the playhead in place right after the song ends. Select all the clips. And click the scissors. Then select all the clips to the right of the splice you just made and delete them. Double check to make sure it sounds right at the beginning and at the end. Nice, let's check the end. Hey. Hey. Great. The last finishing touch we're going to add is a title screen during the musical introduction. This would be a good place to see the name of your group or a holiday message and also provide some cover so you're not looking at a bunch of singers who aren't singing for so long. This will require two more video tracks, one to place a solid black background so our video starts with a black screen and one more to place some text on top of that. So I'll click this plus sign to add another track and click video. I'm going to call this black background. Then up here in the media area, click backgrounds, then click solids, and I'll click and drag this black one down onto my new track. Now I'm going to add another video track which we'll use to add our text. So I'll click this plus sign, click video, I'm going to call this one intro text. Then back up here in the media area, click text. You'll see on the left a few categories, motion, static, in season, and call outs. There are tons of different animated and simple text options to choose from in these different categories. But for this particular video, I'm going to go with in season. And I'm going to scroll down here to fireplace and drag it onto my intro text track on the timeline. I'll adjust the length so it goes until just before the singing starts, which I can see from Jared's audio waveform is right about here. Now I'll double click on the fireplace thumbnail to edit the text to say what I want. Once you're in this editing window, click the speech bubble in the top left. You can see from the preview this particular title sequence has two different text blocks. So I'll change the first one to say Happy Holidays. 
and the second one to say from the pod squad. Now on this screen you can change the colors and fonts and sizes if you want, but this looks good to me so I'll just click save changes. Now when I play the video back from the beginning it goes from black to the cute little fireplace animation which gets out of the way just in time to see the singers when you hear them. With boughs of holly, -la 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 -la. Nice! You could use one of these title sequences again at the end to add credits or something like that if you want. Alright, that's it. We're done. Make sure you watch your finished video again from beginning to end to make sure everything's good. Tweak it as much as you like with the tools you've learned, and of course there are tons of features in this program we haven't even touched on, so feel free to explore. Once you're happy with your edit, it's time to export. Click Finish in the top right corner. And you've got a couple options here. Choose a thumbnail for your video. Select standard or high definition. I'd recommend HD for videos going up online. And from here you can host straight to YouTube, Google Drive, Dropbox, or a few other places. Or you can use the Wii Video Download option, which is this first icon on the left. This will send a link to your email where you can watch your rendered video and download it to your computer. Then you could always upload it to YouTube or share it however you like later. Make your selection and then click export. This next step takes a few minutes while it renders your final video. Hope this has been helpful. We can't wait to see what you make, whether it's with one of our kits like you saw here or something else you're working on. Have fun.